Hey, it's Mike here, and today, minx. We're talking about that sultry term for a woman. No, we're not. We're talking about the plural of mink. These furry guys, the plural of mink is apparently also mink. So, point is, we've seen a rapid evolution of SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind COVID, on mink farms in Denmark, which is now a viral strain known as Cluster 5, which hopefully will not become COVID-20. There's a valid concern that this particular strain could be vaccine resistant and other treatment resistant, so we're going to investigate that. And you may have heard word of some zombie minks, so we're gonna look into that as well. And I will say we're gonna try and not keep this video too serious because the subject matter, I already know you guys don't wanna hear too much about, but we have to strike a balance between educating and also not being too depressed. So we'll try and find that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep this one short. It's just gonna be Mike and some mink. Let's go for some background. We've known for a while, Obviously that animals can get infected with the coronavirus. I mean, after all, it came from animals, probably from a pangolin, that's still the going theory. Several species of animals can be infected. I mean, there was a tiger at the New York Zoo. Obviously bats can get it. Dogs can allegedly get it, but it appears that it's not very infectious or lethal when they get it. Like they're very unlikely to pass it on again. And the most likely original host for SARS-1 was civet cats, which anatomically are a bit similar to mink. So it's not a surprise that mink can also get it. Also, why do they have to call civet cats cats? They are not feline. Stop calling things things that they are not. Like we don't call beavers log dogs. Although that's cute, we should totally start calling them that. And if you like beavers, you should go ahead and follow Beaver Baby Furry Love on TikTok. It's a beaver rehab and it's really cute. So with all that in mind, it's not a super surprise that mink can become infected with COVID. So did they maybe get one or two mink? No, they found that mink tested positive on 200 mink farms. I mean, mink no mistake in the mink of an eye, we could be on a minking ship on the mink of catastrophe. It goes on. These mink farms are for fur, and what makes me especially angry is that a lot of these mink are used for eyelash extensions, the vanity, and oh man, as a vegan, this really just bothers me on so many levels. And as you can probably guess, these mink farms are a perfect environment for the rapid spread. I mean, these are smaller cages, close animals together, and a lot of those animals, it's not a good equation. And it'd be one thing if these mink were getting COVID, animals don't appear to be lethally affected anyway. So, you know, a little bit of sniffly little coughing minks and everything would be fine. But it turns out they have taken SARS-CoV-2 that us humans get and they've remixed it quite rapidly in a way that infects them and can also bounce back to humans and it has bounced back to humans and that's what I was referring to as cluster five. After the discovery of this new strain and the risky implications, the Danish government ordered 17 million minks to be culled and some of them started to become culled, but then people realized this isn't necessarily legal to force people to cull these minks. And so it's unclear how many have been culled, but not all of them have obviously. And for those that don't know, culling is just a nice way of saying killing. So now you know. If an alternative, how about they all just practice some nice little mink social distancing, put them in little houses 10 feet apart. And what? I'm being told that because there are three times as many mink as people in Denmark that it would just take up all of the land in Denmark. The country will now be known as Denmink. I am extra lame today. All right, let's get into more detail about this bouncing back and forth between mink and humans. We have from the WHO, quote, it remains a concern when any animal virus spills into the human population or when an animal population could contribute to amplifying and spreading a virus affecting humans. As viruses move between human and animal populations, genetic modifications in the virus can occur naturally, of course. Well, those genetic mutations did occur and it happened in what is probably the worst place possible for it to happen, and that is the spike protein. Why? Because the spike protein is what our vaccines are targeting. And for a quick refresher, the spike protein is the little bumpy part of the crown of the coronavirus that is what actually gloms on to, makes contact with the ACE2 receptors in various cells throughout your body, including your lungs. The WHO reports that these mink versions versions of the virus are also showing a decreased sensitivity to antibodies. Preliminary cell experience suggests that the antibodies for some people who had recovered from COVID-19 found it more difficult to recognize the cluster five variant than viruses that did not carry the cluster five mutations, which of course suggests that it can be less responsive to antibody treatments and vaccines. People like Donald Trump who got those monoclonal antibodies, if they had this particular strain, it might've not been as successful. But we can relax a bit because according to this write-up in the journal Nature, 
COVID mink analysis shows mutations are not dangerous yet. Are you as reassured as I am? I'm just gonna relax for the rest of 2020. What could go wrong? They do say the virus doesn't appear to be more lethal or more contagious than our classic COVID. COVID classic, not to be confused with diet COVID or COVID zero. I wish we could go back to COVID zero. And that was from a virologist at the University of Oxford. Yet, yet at the same time, they say, quote, in regions with affected mink farms, the population of people with COVID-19 increases a lot. So either they're wrong about the contagious level of this, or there's just that many people in Denmark in the mink industry. I don't know. And when talking about cluster five, it's important to note that there have already been quite a few mutations of SARS-CoV-2, but they've all been pretty minor and some have occurred to the spike protein, but the cluster five one is just, a little bit further along. Like there's four variations on the spike proteins, but it appears that the Nature article isn't reassuring us based on how effective a vaccine would be against this, just, just how little it is spreading. They say it's only spread to 12 people officially. It's not spreading around the globe, so vaccines should still work for most people. And you might be like, oh yeah, just 12 people, it'll be fine. But if we've learned anything from this whole pandemic, it's that things tend to just sneak by. Yeah, we've recorded it in 12 people, but there's always more people infected than we have tested. Did they completely lock this down and stop it from spreading? Maybe, but if they didn't, down the line when vaccines are widespread and perhaps maybe immunity that is already occurring plus vaccines plus time can just allow us to conquer COVID-19, then that could create a vacuum for this virus, which could then become the official COVID-20 virus, which will really only be a name that's given to a virus that developed in 2020 that has become prominent. If it just fades into obscurity, it'll remain cluster five. If it becomes front and center, then it's gonna be COVID-20. And for another piece of hopefully relaxing information, the Danish government claims that the strain is likely extinct. So hopefully they're right. And to address the whole zombie mink thing, uh, it's kind of gross, so I'll go really quickly. The report all over the news was minks that were killed and buried were rising from their grave. Well, obviously they weren't becoming alive. It wasn't a new strain of COVID that causes zombification, creates zombies. No, it was simply that there were so many buried in once that the expanding methane gas caused things to bubble up. And anyway, we're moving on already. We're moving on, you know what happened. When looking at this issue, the main point is simply as The Guardian put it in this article title, no, these Danish mink are a warning sign that the way we use animals is extremely dangerous. The question is, is anybody paying attention? Will we learn our lesson? And we obviously didn't learn when it was civet cats in SARS-1, when it was camels in MERS, when it was pangolins in this current one, because apparently wet markets are going again. We didn't learn when it was chickens, which is the likely origin of the 1918 flu from Kentucky from a chicken farm. So clearly we need to get with it, our human interaction and large scale breeding of all of these animals for farming, whether it is food or eyelashes is very dangerous. It makes us interact with way too many animals in way too close of a quarters and can just accelerate the development of zoonotic diseases. It's not smart. And it goes without saying, by living a vegan lifestyle, you are contributing way, way, way less to these animal systems. And if society decides to go more vegan on a larger scale, then we just aren't going to have these risks in the same way that we do now. Our chance of uh, the next big COVID remix becoming a hit in the worst possible way would be way, way, way lower. And of course, as I keep blowing the whistle on the flus that could be really dangerous, like H7N9, avian and swine flus, pig and bird flus could be completely prevented if we just stop doing what we're doing. So next time, think before you mink. That is it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this or if there's any other information on this I missed. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.